Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our recording of our Early Childhood Education Adult Learning Webinar at the University of Indianapolis. My name is Brandon Bennett. I am the Graduate Admissions Counselor and Adult Learning Counselor for the School of Education and the College of Arts and Sciences at the University. Um, you have my phone number and email up here, and we'll pull that up again at the end if you want to reach out with any questions. And now I would like to introduce my co-host, John, you want to start? Oh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Kirkendall, and I serve as the Dean of the School of Education. Welcome, and I'm happy to talk with you more about our exciting early childhood education program. Hello, everyone. I am Libby Turner, and I am the elementary education coordinator at the University of Indianapolis, and I will get to work with the early childhood program. So I'm equally as excited to hopefully have you in our presence next year. All right. So I did want to talk a little bit about the university to begin with, in case you are not familiar with us. Our mascot is the Greyhounds, and we have our lovely Grady, our live mascot. Uh, but more importantly, we are a private uh, liberal arts university on the south side of Indianapolis. We were founded in 1902, and we're situated on about 65 acres of property. We have approximately about 4,000 undergraduate students, a little over 1,000 graduate students. So we're kind of in that uh, small to medium category. We compete in Division II sports in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. And we're about 10 minutes south of downtown Indy. And I think that's one of the most important features of the university is that we're really connected into the city, especially in the education scene, but we're not kind of in the thick of downtown. We're on our own little end of things. And so some of the things we're going to cover are more specific to the early childhood education program, but some more kind of broad information about the university. We do offer a little over 100 undergraduate programs and we have a student faculty ratio of about 13 to one. So we really do prioritize the small classroom education and making sure that you connect with your faculty and get to know them and they get to know who you are. Uh, we are a nationally ranked university and we also uh, have a repeated Colleges of Distinction uh, award for 2020-2021. And as I already mentioned, we're really close to downtown Indy for our professional experiences. And we also do offer uh, study abroad opportunities. So next I'm gonna show a quick video of some kind of drone shots of campus. If you are listening with headphones, I recommend turning it down for the video. Well, you got a quick tour of the University of Indianapolis. And as you can see sitting right behind me, this is Esch Hall. And Esch Hall is where the School of Education is located at the University of Indianapolis. And you saw it, it's right at the end of the reflection pool that you kind of saw the overview of as we were, as they were flying over the university for you. So coming to the University of Indianapolis, what makes our early childhood program designed just for you? Well, you will walk out with a bachelor's of education, early education degree, and we are offering you the opportunity to have a mild intervention minor. Many of the courses are built in, so it's just a few extra courses. And the reason we believe that this is especially imperative for you in an early childhood program is that many of the children who do have special needs at 
in the early years are not fully identified yet. And so it's especially important that you are able to know different strategies and ways to address their needs. The licensure will allow you to work through age for pre-K age three through grade three. And the track that you would be coming into is what we're calling the Ivy Tech two plus two transfer program. And we have an agreement set up with Ivy Tech that already articulates the courses, which we will share with you later. The courses will be set up as eight week courses. So within one semester, you'll take two different sets of courses and they're primarily online. It will happen over the course of five semesters. So it means that you would use two full years in one summer in order to do that. And the great news is, is that we're starting this coming fall in uh, 2021. So what are some components about ours that are different than everybody else's? Well, the first part that we have is that we understand that working with children of all ages, it's important to understand, to bring in a global and multicultural perspective. So where the University of Indianapolis is located on the South side, it offers many opportunities for you to immerse yourself in different communities and to work with students from different nationalities. So our global perspective comes on uh, three different levels for you. So the first one is working with students from different, different um, backgrounds. One of those we have is we work with Perry Township who has a Chin population. We also um, have several different school districts that have a heavy Hispanic population. And then um, of course we work with IPS that also has a mix of students as well. So we understand the importance of working with people from all different types of backgrounds. So that's one. The second is, is that early childhood education is a compilation of many different philosophies and philosophies that have come together from all around the world. So we have Reggio Emilia, which is from Italy, and we also have the Montessori, we have Vygotsky. So as you learn about different perspectives and different influences on early childhood education, we want you to have those backgrounds so that you can bring those into your classroom and bring the best that is available from all around the world. And then the last one that we have in there is that we, um, we are working with a particular university over in Ireland. And as Brandon mentioned earlier, that there are opportunities for you to study abroad. And so it would be a little more challenging in your very quick two um, plus two program, but we are hoping to have opportunities for you to do that. We already talked about the pre-K age three with the mild intervention all built in. So that's a wonderful opportunity for you. Play-based approach. We understand that, especially in the early childhood years, education, a lot of what happens in education happens through play for children and their learning. We want to help you see how to put structure to the play, not so structured that it feels like the students are doing very structured lessons, but enough structure so that you can see how you can put learning goals into play experiences and help the students learn through all different types of um, modalities and experiences. This particular program does have a focus on integrated and interdisciplinary approaches, meaning that in the early childhood years, you don't teach math and then reading and then science or social studies, that a lot of times the science um, might serve as the basis. So perhaps you're studying something from the outdoors and you look at the different types of bugs or plants that you're finding. And then you come back in and you do some experiments with those plants to see what makes them grow or perhaps what type of environment you would provide for a bug to help it continue to uh, thrive. And then you do some reading and figure out what does that look like? And then they do some observations and write some different things. So there's all kinds of ways that we are bringing in all of the different types of curriculum and content into interdisciplinary lessons for that pre-K through age three experience. And then last, we feel like it's incredibly important for you to spend time in those classrooms so that before you walk out and have one of your very own, you will have had experiences both in the preschool setting as well as in a primary elementary, so a kindergarten through grade three setting. So we'll make sure that you get both of those pieces in your student teaching experience. This program is designed for you that if you are a working adult, 
Um, this is designed so that you can use your own experiences that you're collecting through your own employment. And we would have uh, opportunities for you to help talk about and bring in things that are happening for you to make it very relevant. All right. <clears throat> so with this program, as we mentioned, this opportunity to transfer in from Ivy Tech will be seamless. So we have all of our TSAP curriculum agreements uh, understood between both campuses. So you will be able to transfer all of your courses from Ivy Tech with your associate's degree. Those credits will transfer into our program. So essentially you will be able to begin our program. It's as a UND Greyhound, you will become, you will be a junior in that program. So you'll have two years to complete uh, the courses. And so what this, this particular slide shows you is the agreement between the transfer courses from Ivy Tech into the University of Indianapolis and what they will count for. So for example, if you've taken English Composition 111 at Ivy Tech, that will count for the English 101 Composition course that you don't have to take at the University of Indianapolis. So we want you to understand that those courses have transferred in and you will have them for credit at the University of Indianapolis. And this is just the second page of that agreement. So you see that a total of 60 credits matches a total of 60 on our side as you become a University of Indianapolis Greyhound. So that's very exciting for you as a student knowing that we have come up with this agreement that allows you to transfer 60 courses for 60 courses, 60 credits for 60 credits. The next two years. So when you become a UND Greyhound and you start the early childhood program with us, the following chart will show you what's left. What do those next two years look like? So I'll go through that chart next. All right, so you will be required to complete a total of 66 credits on our side, on the University of Indianapolis side to complete the program. Um, there are some courses there at the top, English history, religion and wellness that are part of our kind of liberal arts focus and philosophy that we require everyone to take when they come to the University of Indianapolis. And then below that, you will see the sequence of early childhood education major courses within our program that have been carefully developed as Dr. Turner talked about the play-based approach and the, the emphasis on global education. All of that is built into these courses. So we think we have an exciting curriculum for you to expand towards your bachelor's degree. I would like to introduce one of our fabulous students, Maria McCune. Maria is a current kindergarten teacher, uh, future kindergarten teacher, if you will. And she's out there, she's an elementary education uh, major. Um, and she's gonna talk to you a little bit about what it's been like for her as a student at the University of Indianapolis and in our School of Education. So Maria, take it away. Hello everyone. Um, I would like to share some of the reasons why I love the University of Indianapolis and especially the School of Education here. One thing that brings me um, just happiness is the small class sizes here at UND, which is very unique. Um, it allows you to develop very personal relationships with your peers, your cohort, and your professors. Um, one thing I love is knowing that all the, pro all the professors know who I am, um, and also they know my life outside of being their student. Um, many of you may see yourself as being a parent and I have a two-year-old, so I'm going through college as well as figuring out how to balance the parent life. And that was something that was nerve wracking for me, but my professors and advisors at UND have all welcomed me. They're very understanding. Um, so that's one reason why I love the field here. Um, also, the connections are amazing. Um, right when I was a freshman, I walked into so many different schools, and that's not something everywhere that I've experienced. Um, coming as I wrap up, I can't tell you how many schools I've walked into, and that has helped me be the teacher who I am today. So if you find yourself at UND, you will be walking in many different directions. Um, take advantage of the connections that you will offer here at the school and um, can't wait to see you if you become a UND Greyhound. Thank you, Maria. Congratulations to you on being a senior. 
I'd like to walk through uh, some particular um, types of opportunities that you'll have as a student uh, that make you you indie unique. You indie unique. Uh, again, we are a ranked national university uh, by the U.S. News and World Report. That's an important distinction as you go out and look for highly ranked universities that support students. We're a national university, so we compete with all the universities uh, in our nation in terms of credibility. Uh, our School of Education is a college of distinction. We're CAPE accredited. That means we have the ability to, to license teachers, and we're supported by the state of Indiana with that. CAPE has given us that, that national recognition, so we're accredited in all of our, our undergraduate uh, programs. Uh, we have a lot of support in the School of Education. To become a teacher at any level, you have to go through several gateways and, 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 and processes to become one. And we support you through advising our close relationships with faculty. You get to know your faculty in a, in a really close and personal way, one-on-one. -on -one. They know your name. They, they, they call you. Uh, as you walk down the halls, it's, it's, it's really common for our faculty to, to call you into offices and see how you're doing, uh, not just about your, your professional lives and your schoolwork, but how you're doing personally and in ways that we can support you. As you come into our programs as adult students, uh, we know that you may have, as Maria mentioned, uh, particular needs, and we want to support you through those. We have very small class sizes that says 13 to 1. Our classes are small, which allows for that personal relationship to grow and develop. And so you'll get used to being around a cohort of students that, that know one another and support each other as well. Uh, we have a very affordable program for you. Uh, as you as you think about moving into our adult program, that adult rate is in the neighborhood of $365 per credit hour, which is something that allows you uh, to think about it from a cost perspective uh, of, of, and you compare yourselves to other universities. We think that that rate uh, will be very attractive uh, for you, $365 uh, per credit hour or in that neighborhood. Uh, we have high job placement, a perfect job placement, if you will. Uh, many of our students are hired uh, before they even graduate. And so uh, thinking about your senior year as you do your practice placement teaching, uh, nine times out of 10, you would have been contacted by our school district for an interview and probably offered a contract. So that's that's something that we're really proud of that the, the, the school corporations in our area uh, are really seeking out our students to come and teach in their schools. And we have diverse experiences. We'd like for you to be able to teach many different types of students. So you'll have an opportunity at the pre-K level and at the primary grade level to work in school settings that reflect our country, reflect our nation. And so you'll be able to do that really well and we'll work with you. It's part of our mission as a school of education that our teachers go out and be able to educate all types of learners, no matter what background they come from. We're really proud of that. And we want you to be prepared to teach a variety of learners in a variety of school settings. And so while all of that probably sounds really busy, we do have a lot for students to do that are kind of outside of the classroom or kind of in conjunction with the academic side of things. So we have a little over 70 registered student organizations. As you can see from the layout here, they can be broken down into different categories, such as academic groups, common interest groups, community service, uh, religious groups, recreation, honor societies, cultural organizations. And we encourage everybody to get involved with anything that sounds interesting to them whether it's as part of academics, whether it's a common interest idea. Um, the thing that sounds most interesting to me is the Gamers Club. But whatever suits your preferences, we want you to feel that you're part of the campus. And so that's not just excelling in the classroom, but it's also having opportunities to connect with other students outside the classroom. Something else I wanted to mention is our Professional Edge Center which is our kind of career readiness center, but they do a little bit more with that. Um, as you can see from the icons on the bottom, they host different career events every year, over hundred on campus to connect students with different leaders in different industries. Uh, they, they set up students with over 400 plus internships every year. That's not even counting all the internships and professional experiences from various departments, which you'll work more with the School of Education specifically for placements. Um, they also handle jobs on campus. So I know we were talking about an adult learning program. 
here, which is going to be kind of centered around a full-time working adult. But if for some reason you would like to get a job on campus, you can seek one out as well. But we definitely also prioritize the hands-on learning with ProEdge as part of the professional experiences. And if you ever need assistance with preparing, um, preparing a resume, getting ready for an interview, anything of that nature, they can also help you with that. And just to kind of reiterate about the transfer credits, um, we can accept anything that has come from a regionally accredited institution, such as Ivy Tech, with at least a C minus in the course. So when you're looking over your transcripts, just kind of uh, keep in mind that you may need to have a C minus or better in all of your courses to count towards a specific major or apply as elective credits. And um, keeping that in mind, transferring is very easy. So your next steps, if you're interested in joining the Early Childhood Education Program, is to apply. You can go to und.edu slash apply and scroll down to the Evening and Accelerated Programs section. Uh, to qualify as an adult learning applicant, you do have to be either 24 years of age or older or count as a finan financially independent student, uh, which I can always uh, work with students to figure out if you meet those qualifications or not. Uh, when you apply, you want to send your official transcripts from Ivy Tech to University of Indianapolis. So that means it has to come either electronically or through the mail directly from Ivy Tech. Um, it unfortunately cannot come directly from a student. And once we work through the admissions process, um, it doesn't take more than a week or two at the most to get your information in, get a decision made, and get that decision back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, something else you would want to keep in mind during application process is the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Uh, April 15th was the Indiana deadline, and if you have not filed um, by now, that's still okay. There's still federal aid available, uh, both the federal Pell Grant if you qualify for need-based money, and the federal Safford loans if you want to help fund your education that way. Um, as Dr. Kirkendall already mentioned, the rate for the adult learners is uh, significantly discounted compared to a traditional undergraduate program. And we also offer payment plans where you can break down a payment uh, for a semester into five months. So there are different financing options that we can work with that I am certainly here to help you with. So um, just to show all of our contact info on the screen again, obviously, if you want to reach out with any questions, um, for me specifically, it would be more of the application process and the financial aid process. Um, for Dr. Kirkendall and Dr. Turner, if you have any questions about uh, curriculum specifically, more questions about how they can help advise you, get you into, get into the schools and get professional experiences, um, whatever your questions happen to be, please let us know. Um, you can reach us by phone or email, and we're always happy to set up a time to meet with you, whether it's on campus or a virtual visit, uh, whatever is your preference. Um, do either of you have anything else to add? All right. Well, thank you for joining everybody. Uh, you can find out more information on our website, und.edu slash ALP. And I think that is that. So thank you for joining us. We will hopefully see you soon.